Right, we're going to have a look now. Um, we're going to be doing all of this through the Exchange Admin Center. Um, obviously, all this can be done and more through the Exchange Management Shell, but we'll, we'll stay within the Exchange Admin Center. So I'm going to create a new mailbox. Hit the plus. We're on recipients, mailboxes. All right, so it wants an alias. Let's try Matthew. Uh, Matthew, let's try Matthew. Uh, Brown and it's not an existing user it's a new user first name Matthew last name Brown display name Matthew Brown I'm happy with that name Matthew Brown what OU so you can browse for an OU that you actually want to put this user account in we'll just select users Generally, we would go into a specific OU, but that will serve our purposes. User logon name, Matthew Brown. All right, at adatum.com, that's the UPN and their password. And whether you want them to change their password at next logon, uh, there's more options at the bottom. Uh, I'll click on it, but we're not going to configure any of them. So specify a database. Well, we will do that. All right, so I'm going to specify mailbox database one, which I've just done, um, and that will do it. Let's say save. And there you go, Matthew Brown. So if we go in and look at the properties for Matthew Brown, we'll have a quick look around here. Um, general information. All right, so you can hide them from address lists down the bottom. Mailbox usage. All right, they have not logged on yet, so just telling you the user hasn't logged on. Contact information. So you can specify street and address, uh, phone numbers, and so on and so forth here. Organization information, their title, the department they're in, the company, who their manager is email address. So the email address policy is given this user alias at adatum.com. So the alias is Matthew Brown. That's worked. SMPP address. And as you can see, Exchange is going to be uh, responsible for keeping uh, their email addresses up to date should you change the email address policy. Mailbox features. Um, some of these will be, so the default sharing policy, the default role assignment policy, all right, so that's what they can do to their mailboxes. We talked about that a bit. Retention policy, we don't have any in place now. And address book policy, we don't have any in place now. And as you can see, you can go down and configure features for um, items like um, mobile devices. So right now, um, Active Sync is enabled. You could disable it from here. Look at the view details. Yeah, you can see here that they have the default Active Sync policy. Uh, that can be changed if you had more than one policy. And it would also list any mobile devices that have been connected, but of course there haven't been any. We can go down and put a litigation hold on. A litigation hold is also sometimes called a legal hold. If we did that, then single item recovery would be turned on. Uh, their quotas would be ignored. And uh, basically anything in the mailbox um, would be you wouldn't be able to delete anything in the mailbox. You can delete it from an end user perspective, but it would still exist uh, in the uh, purchase folder and so on and so forth. Archiving is not enabled. We don't have an archive mailbox for them yet. I could put one in place if I wanted to. Um, and delivery options. So if we look at the details for delivery options, you can see you can enable forwarding here. So basically forward to another address. Um, and the maximum number of recipients they're allowed to have in an email. Message size restrictions. Um, you can basically, right now it's using the defaults, uh, but you could actually override those if you wanted and put in a send uh, for sent messages, the maximum message size, and for received messages. And we've got message delivery restrictions right now, which is, of course, the default. They'll accept messages from anyone. 
Any people who are going to send the messages do not need to be authenticated, which is normally the case. If you tick that box, then only internal authenticated users could send them a message. You can also say who to reject messages from. What groups uh, they're a member of, distribution groups that include this recipient. There aren't any uh, mail tips, and you can specify mailbox delegation here. So not specific folders, uh, but the, the entire mailbox. So send as permissions and send on behalf of. You can also say who will have full access permissions. All right, so if I wanted to add someone here, I could. I could go in and specify, let's say, the administrator, have full access permissions to this mailbox. And say save. So that's um, mailboxes. We're also going to look at groups. So we already have some groups here. We'll create a new group. We'll create one called operations. So let's go in. Uh, display name operations. All right. Alias operations. And you can give a description to the group. Again, you probably have an OU for groups. Depends on what you're, uh, how you're actually storing things in Active Directory. I'm going to just put it in the users container for our purposes. Um, and as you can see, it automatically made the administrator, uh, who I'm logged in as, uh, the owner. And you can specify members if you want now. All right, so I could go in and say that Adam is a member, um, Aiden is a member, and so on and so forth. Say OK. Now, down at the bottom, uh, this is brand new to Exchange 2010 and 2013. Right now, this distribution group is open, which is not the norm. I don't know why Microsoft has chosen these defaults, but they have. So it's a closed group. So you, the administ you know, basically the administrator uh, or someone who has um, the rights to basically modify the membership of this group would have to put people in and take them out. This is the way we normally do groups. I just say save. And I've got a new group called uh, operations. Now, had I actually, if I go back into the properties, If I go down to um, group delegation, um, again, you can see who has send as uh, and send on behalf of, a mail tip for the group, email options. Okay, so there's the email address. Message approval. So you can basically moderate groups. All right, so I could specify that whenever you send mail to this group, it's going to be moderated. Um, it's going to go through a moderator. So I could tick that box, uh, specify who the group moderators are, and also specify which recipients won't be moderated. Delivery management. It's just telling you here, by default, only senders inside your organization can send messages to this group. All right. So, you know, they basically have to be authenticated. Uh, if I selected that, then this group could be accessed by uh, users that aren't authenticated. Membership approvals. This is where we have closed. Now, I just want to let you know what would happen had we selected open. If we selected open, uh, then what would happen is through OWA and through their options on groups, they could actually join this group. All right? They could just say, yep, I want to join it. Same thing for leaving it. Or we could select this option. That says basically they can join it, but it's going to go to a group owner um, that requests to join. It can be accepted um, or rejected. Here's our membership, our ownership, and just general information.